Greetings film fans and welcome to episode five of The Bigger View Ski. My name is Owen Doherty. It's the worst thumbs ever. My name is Owen Doherty. There's Rory Cashin. And look, it's not Palmer or Justine Stafford. Please welcome to the studio. Round of applause oh. for Serena Bellissimo. I'm Serena Bellissimo. The double thumb now. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you do it. That, that was much better than mine. So Serena, you are the most, uh, it's the most exotic movie reviewer name that we've had on the show to date, I think. Uh, yep. That's probably the only exotic thing about me. My name. <laughs> right. You're going to be so disappointed. What does is, what is Serena Bellissimo mean? Uh, What's it the means, Irish for? It me, uh, ni, ni Bellissimo, is that right? Okay. <laughs> no, it means the most beautiful boy, Bellissimo. Okay. Oh. Yeah, so. Interesting. <laughs> okay. There's no Good. natural segue. <laughs> no, I, I've, got, I've got nowhere to go with that. If you're wondering where Paul Moore and Justine Stafford are, uh, Paul Moore's gone rogue, just gone dark, can't find him anywhere. He's off the radar, Jason Bourne style. But Justine Stafford has, she had a bit of an adventure after last week's show. Um, if you remember, we were chatting about our favourite film, Starring the Rock, mm. and after the show, we kind of we tweet out, you know, things that we've been talking about. And so Justine sent out this tweet uh, from her own account, tagging The Rock. Take a look at this. And if you're listening, take a listen to this picture. <laughs> um, so she said, hey, at The Rock, I hope you like my Rock collection. Um, and it was a little clip of her talking about her pictures of The Rock. Yeah. Which was, which was a funny, a funny guy. A nice little funny pun gag. And then... The Rock himself, Dwayne Johnson, yep. tweeted, uh, let's see what he said, didn't like it at all, Justine. I hearted it with a little winky face. And then a punch. And <laughs> like a punch in her Twitter account, um, which is incredible. So are you telling me I'm here because Justine is now stalking The Rock? No, 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 there's stalking, no stalking. Stalking, no. Has we, she gone we to can, find him? We can neither <laughs> confirm nor deny that they are an item. They are now in a relationship. <laughs> she um, is Justine Rock. <laughs> yeah, Justine Rock, that's the yeah. one. Justine The Rock. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought um, his first name was The. Oh, you're right. So it'd be Justine Rock. You're dead right. I know. Um, <laughs> that's not all that happened, though, because I know you're right. Um, <laughs> after that initial tweet, this happened. Dwayne The Rock Johnson just tweeted, Now that is a real rock collection. Big shout out to Justine Stafford for the love. Black Heart, Red Heart, and you're right, who needs clothes anyway? Hashtag Retro Walk, <laughs> Retro Walk for the win. <laughs> Um, which is amazing. And what are these emojis? I don't know, what is that emoji? It's just like a Who needs shrug, clothes? half you know? a shrug. Who needs clothes? We do, legally, it's yeah. fine. Uh, and then, that, that wasn't the end of the adventure. Uh, this tweet happened. Justine actually got back to him and said, Haha, glad you approve the pun reel rock collection. Little smiley face, retro rock for life. And then he tweeted for a third time. This is, it's Holy ridiculous. Shit. I have to now use pun reel in a movie. Prayer hands, and then he punched her again. <laughs> he punched her again. <laughs> that stars Justine Stafford, no doubt. That's yeah, why she's 100%. not here. She's on set with The Rock. Yeah, in a relationship with The Rock. She's so like, I believe she is the antagonist of Fast and Furious Nine. <laughs> that is exactly it. So, uh, Justine, if you're watching, um, congratulations. Please, yeah, we're all <laughs> delighted for you. That you and The Rock are happy together. Uh, please don't forget us when you become really rich and famous. Um, so anyway, that was that. <sighs> it was a eventful week. Oh, that yeah. was it. Yeah, pretty much. If you're The Rock and you would like to get in touch with the show again, you can tweet <laughs> us at Big Review Ski. But nobody else. But nobody else. <laughs> Only if you're The Rock. And you can also get in touch on Joe's Instagram as well. Joe.ee. Not just any Joe. Um, so, yeah. Unbelievable show coming up for you this week. We have four fabulous guests. Mm. Um, they're the stars of The Lego Movie 2. We have Chris Pratt, Elizabeth Banks, Tiffany Haddish, and Will Arnett, they're going to be joining us, Serena. They're going to be coming in here to studio later. Amazing. What a show to be a part of. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. Really time. <laughs> um, and as well as that, we're going to have some tickets to give away and uh, all the reviews of the big releases this week. Up first, though, it's time for the big question on the Big Review Ski. And for this week's big question, Big Review Ski, it's over to Roy Cashin. Hello. Hello there. This is off the back of our discussion about Top Gun when I made the uh, horrific... Shocking. Revelation that I've never seen Top Gun. How is that possible? And that's the reaction right there. That's the reaction we're looking this for. This is also my mother's reaction. But how do you, like, you throw lines into conversation all the time. How do you throw lines like, I feel the need, the need for speed into a conversation? That. You said that, that, that time you needed speed, you said that. I was that. just looking for drugs. <laughs> that's yeah, the same just thing. That's just a separate just, problem. I, I feel the need for amphetamines. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, I've, I've never seen it. So off the back of that, I figured uh, let's all come out of the 
closet of not having seen really, really, really famous yeah. movies. So what is the most really, really famous movie you've never seen? Well, what is your example? Because you do, you do get that reaction from people and they're like, what? Yeah. And it's awful because the thing is you're excited about, you still have the opportunity to see that film for the first yeah. time. So it, yeah. should be, it should be a good thing as opposed to you are an outcast of society. Yeah, like I think people are more forgiving about Top Gun because it's like, obviously it's a classic in its own way, but it's not a classic classic. 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 Whereas the one I haven't seen is a classic classic. So what was what it? Was it? Um, it was and remains The Godfather Part 2. <gasps> I've seen part one and having seen part one, felt no need to watch part two. What? I, I, yeah. I, can I just say I'm with you on that? So I got my wisdom teeth out a few years ago. and I <laughs> said to my Dentist <laughs> Weekly with Serena Bellissi. <laughs> and I said to my friend, give me your, th this is the time for me to watch The Godfather box set. Okay. I think I fell asleep through one. They told me two is supposed to be amazing. Like with my background as well, like Italian. No, I'm not part of the mafia, but you know. <laughs> um, it yeah. is one's beautiful boy. The yeah. beautiful boy has exactly. struck again. <laughs> Somebody's found dead. What's his calling card? But yeah, no, I just, I, I just didn't say, but I do feel like it's something that we, let's watch it together and see how we go. Okay, so you yeah. haven't watched the second one either? No. no. What? How can I be in the minority <laughs> on a film review show of people who have not seen I've The Godfather seen Part 2? all of Paul Verhoeven's films. Okay, there, there you go. I've seen That's great. A showgirls like, <laughs> number of times. Number of times. Godfather Part Two, showgirls. I'm so trying to think of any balance out. swimming pool scenes in Godfather Part Two. That no. comes to mind right now. Um, well, head. as if you need me to to, to recommend it. Um, uh, it's flipping amazing. I heard it's, it's, pretty oh, good. it's pretty good. But do you know what I feel happens sometimes with these things? Like when you when someone says, "How have you not seen that?" and then mm. you sit down to watch it and you're utterly disappointed. Like. I have seen these films now, but The Notebook and um, Mean Girls were two films that I hadn't seen for a long time. I wasn't disappointed <laughs> by Mean Girls. Again. I know, Mean Girls I only watched a couple of months ago. Like but The Notebook, I just went, ah, oh, come on now. What is See, everybody going on about? I would be like the next step up from that. I was like, I felt like that about 2001. Ooh. I felt like that about mm. Apocalypse Now. <laughs> I felt like that about <laughs> Lawrence of Arabia. I haven't seen Lawrence of Arabia. It's not my one though. Like there's there's classics where I'm like <clears throat> I get why they're classics, but yeah, they're not for on. me. Yeah. No, trust me, you will not be disappointed by the Godfather Part I feel Two. Like it might be. Two of you leave right now <laughs> and <laughs> go and watch it, please. Well, Serena, what did you go for? The Usual Suspects. Well, Roy, have you seen? I'm just presuming you haven't seen The Usual Suspects. No, I, I have, I have, but like you've got two very good reasons not to watch it now. Now I do. So, see, yeah. sometimes if you hold it out long enough, the, the, the shock film will just yeah. not yeah. want to be seen yeah. anymore. So I didn't watch it just in case some Kevin Spacey and, and Brian or Brian, and or Brian Singer stuff. news happened to break. <coughs> um, yeah, would that put you off seeing it now? I mean, two minds. Do you know that that is a really interesting conversation to have because I am in two minds about that because it's not just one person's livelihood that is affected by this. Mm. He isn't the only one, like there's one, two, three, there's five people in The Usual Suspects, so. More. There's, there's even more. They oh, couldn't really? fit them Seven all names on the poster. On the poster oh, yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah. And who, Kaiser. Soze. Soze. Kaiser Soze, the please don't, I just please don't just, reveal, please don't well, reveal. No, no, but the amount of times I just need to smile, I just smile when people have uh -huh, those conversations uh -huh. and just go, mm, I'm not telling you I have or I haven't seen it. Well, again, it's another phenomenal film. Um, it is a very good film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> you're like, it's very good. It doesn't quite reach phenomenal, but yeah. it's very good. It is, it is very good. Yeah. So I actually would recommend that one. Okay. Yeah. I'm okay. dying to know what your one is. So my one is in Lawrence of Arabia. I have seen <laughs> Godfather Part Two <laughs> and The Usual Suspects. I've seen Showgirls. No. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've definitely seen all the seen important ones. <laughs> all the big classics. My one, I'm trying to remember what it was. Is it written on your card? Oh, it should be. It's not. The, all will be revealed now in the picture and I'll actually remember what it is because I haven't actually seen it. <gasps> That's right. What? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen that one either. That the looks Shining. Too scary. I understand why you wouldn't, because yeah. Serena is uh, she's not one for horror. So. Okay. So You've been with me in a horror film. It hasn't been pleasant. No, I have, to get, I have to get my shoulder put back in place afterwards. <laughs> it's a beautiful boy crying. But, um, so The Shining, yeah, obviously Stanley Kubrick's horror masterpiece uh, there with Jack Nicholson, just popping through the door with a big axe. So I have seen so many bits mm. here and there of The Shining. Uh, I've seen the Simpsons episode, like the shinning, <laughs> you get the references, the new documentaries we made, like, and people worship this film. I have not sat down in my life, and I've had the opportunity to, and I've not sat down and watched The Shining. I'm 
So there you go. I don't care. But, I... do you, but do you feel like, because you have seen so many clips, that happens sometimes with movies, you've seen something so often that you go, maybe I have seen the film already and there is I no need. I know for a fact that I haven't because <laughs> I've purposefully decided, it's like, I can't, I'm not going to put myself through this. But I will, I will someday. If you watch The Godfather Part 3 and you watch Usual Suspects, I'll watch we'll do it The Shiny. We'll have three tellies. Three TVs, <laughs> one on each of these TVs will watch it. Is that why I haven't watched it? Because you think it's too scary? Yeah. I can, I can tell you now, it's not that scary. What? It's very good. It's brilliant. Do you know what's not that scary? So if you've seen Ready Player One, which came out last year, yeah. Steven Spielberg's film, and they do a whole section that's yeah. kind of based around The Shining, and it's actually brilliant. And so that's where I watched most of The Shining, was through <laughs> Ready Player One. I'm happy enough with that kind of one bit removed distance. But if you're saying it's not that scary, but then I definitely on, believe on. you. On whose on who's rating system? On Rory's rating system no. or on my rating system? Is it not too scary? <laughs> See, yeah, it's there scary. It's scary. There it's still kind of scary, but it's not there like I, I think you'd be fine. Okay, cheers. It's just very well made. Thanks for caring. You're uh, <laughs> if you have any classic films that you've never seen, and whenever you tell people, they completely lose their minds. It obviously happens with like people who haven't seen Jaws or like I've never seen a Star Wars film, and people go, "What? It's fine." But let us know which ones you haven't seen. <laughs> Isn't it fine? Have you seen it's the totally fine. I saw the what? first Star Wars film. Like you've you've heard this. I, I saw the first Star Wars film, then I decided to opt out of the other two, and then I had to see the the ones that have been remade, and okay. they're they're okay, the ones that okay. I fell asleep in. Okay. Oh my god, we're seeing a pattern emerging here. You just okay. tired all the time. <laughs> you need yeah. to take you just need listen. These are really comfy omniplexes, so if you just want to lie back amazing, there, you'll be sorted, aren't, aren't they? Yeah. 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 These make for a fine nap. Yeah, you get not we're during the show though. We're a review when we look over. It's <laughs> just like what's that snoring noise? So thanks for the big question, Rory. And yep. now it's time for this week's big trailer. Um, now there were lots of ones to pick from this week. I obviously wanted to go with Hobbs and Shaw again. Sure. In the in the <laughs> the vague kind of hope that The Rock would tweet again. I would uh, and tweet about the show. Well. Uh, it is a phenomenal trailer. But the real trailer that everybody is talking about is Aladdin, the live action remake of the beloved 1992 yes. classic. Yes. 92. Two or three. 91, 92, 93 yeah. classic. Early 90s. Uh, early 90s. <laughs> um, so let's take a little look at Aladdin uh, before we discuss blue stuff. the land. Your life begins now. Aladdin. don't know who I am. Genie, wishes, lamp, none of that ringing a bell. So, a couple of questions there, quickly, off the back of that okay. one. Well, what do you think? Uh, is this is this basically a lose-lose situation for Will Smith as the genie? Because, like, no one is ever going to top Robin Williams in the um, original. No. And plus, did you see him? I did, yeah. Um, a roided out avatar <laughs> with <laughs> yeah. the hair. Um, my biggest question is they took Jafar and there's now a, a hashtag on Twitter. It just says sexy Jafar. Sexy Jafar. Yeah. Okay. Was he not? He was sexy in the original as no, well. No, he sure no. wasn't. <laughs> no, he was, uh, a, he was an old man. Like even her dad was like, but you're so old. Do you remember <laughs> yeah, when he was trying to yeah, yeah. off? And in this he's like a young, sexy young man. Young sexy Jafar. Yeah. Okay. And like, I don't see what the... <laughs> So but cast, the choice there was. So, so cast wise, obviously Will Smith is playing the genie. Um, we have Mina Masood, who's playing Aladdin. Mm -hmm. Naomi Scott as Jasmine. And then the sexiest man that you were saying, Rory, is Marwan Kinzari as, uh, as Jafar. That's so, an exotic name too. <laughs> it is. Take that, Serena. Friend of yours. Um, there are bits of it that look really good, like the shot when they're at the cave at the opening of the film and the opening of the trailer there as well. Um, like the cityscapes with like Iago flying along, but it was just like... It's kind it of looks, as well. Yeah, it, it looks, but it looks stunning. Like yeah. it looks bright and colourful and stuff. But when I remember watching the Robin Williams one when it came out in the early 90s and just being blown away because yeah. that really brought animation to a totally 
new level and what he did for the genie. And I understand it's great, you know, Disney's going with this whole live action thing, which is great. It does bring another perspective to the film. But I think when the animation was so amazing, do you really want to run the risk of tainting that? Well, they've obviously gone for, they've done Cinderella, yep. Beauty and the Beast. Yep. Dumbo's coming later this Cannot year. Can't wait for that one. Yes. Any other ones? Any Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland, of course. Um, Which was a massive Depp success and Maya as well. Wozikowski. Maleficent. So they're obviously making an absolute fortune off the back of these. Yeah, every and single one of them was made of series bank. Sure, Lion King is coming as well, and they've yeah. done Jungle Book. So and it's they've got like Mulan, they've got Cruella <laughs> yeah. Deville. Like they're, this is what they're just, just what what they're doing now. Yeah. So we're gonna have to make peace with it. Uh, that does not mean I have to make peace with whatever <laughs> G, G, Will Smith is supposed to look like here. It so is there so was a, bizarre looking. Mm. He is very strange looking. Like there was, it's literally like they've just, as you said, like roided him up a bit and just painted him blue. Yeah. There was a friend of mine dressed up as a Smurf for Halloween a couple of years ago, and he kind of looks roughly like he did about <laughs> as decent a paint job on himself. Um, he was freezing that night because he just literally wore like a white nappy and just blue paint. But even the voice was really strange too. I know we only heard yeah. a real a, a short bit of what he has to say, but I just, I don't know. We're judging based on five seconds of him that we've seen. Yeah. We yeah. may, we may be here in six months' time going. Oh my that God, was wasn't great. he amazing? Yeah. As you were saying, because Will Smith is a great actor. Yeah. He's very so, charismatic, he has yeah. the energy, he can't be very funny. Yeah. 100%. But it will all depend on how they use him. And Sexy the, Jafar. And obviously <laughs> Sexy Jafar. Those are the two key things. Hashtag Sexy Jafar. <laughs> yeah, so Aladdin is out uh, 24th of May, later on this year, so keep an eye out for... Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see another full trailer and see if they do reveal any more of, uh, of Will Smith. Yeah, we'll see what the crack is. Um, right, listen, some big interviews for you this week. Um, as we said, the Lego Movie 2 is in cinemas right now. Going to be one of the blockbuster events of the year. Did you get it? Blockbuster. It was like a yeah. wee Lego gag, kind really of. funny one. Yeah. I think it's about the 90th <laughs> time I've said it, so I think even I'm losing the will to live when I hear that joke over and over again. But yes, so uh, one of our colleagues, Mr. Richie Driss, um, who's also... Much more handsome, uh, no offence to anyone who does interviews on our end. I think he's uh, like, oh, <laughs> no, I mean, sorry. us. I you are the most beautiful boy. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> she knows. She can say that, <laughs> got experience. Uh, yes, our colleague Richie Driss, who lives over in London, he was meeting up with the stars of the Lego Movie too, and he decided to sit down and have a chat with Chris Pratt and Elizabeth Banks, first of all. You can see the full interviews, they're up on Joe. But he, uh, one of the questions he asked uh, Chris Pratt was, um, there's a brilliant gag in the trailer and in the film as well, where they're talking about Chris Pratt's, uh, his other character, he plays Emmett and also Rex Danger Vest. Uh, and what is he? He's a raptor trainer, galaxy defender, archeologist and cowboy, which is a reference to various characters that he's played in Magnificent Seven, Guardians of the Galaxy Jurassic World. and Jurassic World. And so Richie wanted to know, because of the archaeology reference, is he the new Indiana Jones? <laughs> you know, I think everything that happened, everything they mined out of my life for uh, the character of Rex Dangervest, including Guardian Galaxy, the Guardian of the Galaxy, the Raptor, they said archaeologist, I'm assuming because that was in the press and in the news, and so they're just like sort of Anything that's in the zeitgeist, they, they can grab and take the piss out of us. And so it doesn't mean anything more than just the fact that people had heard about that. So what do you reckon? Would Chris Pratt make a good Indiana Jones? Before we go there. <laughs> before we go, before we talk about Chris Pratt. What's wrong? Mid-clip there, Serena took my beautiful boy away from me <gasps> and gave it to Richard Driss. I told you he was a good looking lad, didn't he? He is a good looking lad. We can all appreciate that. And we can appreciate Chris Pratt as well. And I think that was a very and good Elizabeth. cover. From... And Elizabeth very, Banks. Well. Yeah, I'm so happy for the three of them. I cannot there. wait to see Charlie's Angels on a side note. Yes. Uh, Elizabeth yeah. Banks. But um, I, we've all heard that before, haven't we? The whole, oh no, that's not us, that's the press, blah, 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 blah. And then six months later, they're out going, it's Hello, me. Hello, I'm Indiana yeah. Jones, yeah. I'm the new one. Um, yeah. I doubt it. No. I don't, I don't. But what if they're trying a different angle? Because he's very different to Harrison Ford. Well, he's doing, Harrison Ford's doing another Indiana Jones. Yeah. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that there's no... No room say, for Chris Pratt yeah. to do it. I'd say if they were doing it again, they'd go even younger. They'd go, like, early 20s. So they wouldn't reference Shia LaBeouf at all? No. River <laughs> Phoenix, 100%. Get him in. That'd be amazing. Do not Wikipedia River Phoenix. Okay. Okay. Um, as well as that, Richie got chatting to him about, uh, he's dead, Serena. Yeah, I know. That's why I actually get the whole, okay. 
So uh, <laughs> he also chatted to them about their plans because uh, they've talked before about uh, how much they love Paddy's Day and stuff. So, Richie, we forced him to ask an Irish question. We said, what are their plans uh, for Paddy's Day? And Elizabeth Banks, will you be celebrating? Yeah, I'll be there. I'm going to drink some, some green beer. Oh. I always, uh, I put green, don't tell my kids, green food coloring in all the toilets and tell them that the leprechauns came and peed in the toilets. Is that true? Yeah, they love that. <laughs> love that. That's they good. love that. Uh, I think I'm going to be up at the farm, so probably uh, drink a little Irish whiskey mm -hmm. and uh, hang with my sheep. That seems very Irish. Super Irish. Yeah, so the most Irish of all things there, drinking whiskey with your sheep on a farm. And peeing green. And leprechauns peeing green. Good to so. say that there's no stereotypes at all. In yeah, that, that it's answer, good to yeah. say. <laughs> like, green pee is a new one on me. That's, I, I that's thought that was a pretty good idea, to be fair. It is. But like then there's like, have leprechauns broken at your home and used your bathroom? I, I think that's what she's telling her kids, definitely. Yeah. They're going to be freaked out. It's like Christmas when they do like the elf on the shelf thing, except this when the leprechaun pisses in your toilet. She has a lot of <laughs> mythical creatures breaking into her home over yeah. the course of the year. She needs a better security system. Elizabeth, you have money. You uh, can afford this. <laughs> so Elizabeth and Chris weren't the only uh, beautiful people that Richie uh, managed to catch up with. He also chatted to Will Arnett, the man with the greatest voice mm. in the world and Tiffany Haddish, who have we said before, Rory, if you could, you would strike up a, a love relationship in the yeah. same way that Justine and The Rock are now together forever. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm fully convinced myself and Tiffany will be married one day. Okay. We just have to meet first. <laughs> that's, a, that's all that needs to happen. Um, as we were saying, Rex Danger Vest is one of Chris Pratt's other characters in the film, um, and it's such a cool name. So uh, Richie chatted to him about the fact, could they come up with very, very cool names for each other? Here's what Will Arnett called. Tiffany Haddish. Tiffnicity. Yeah. How did I come up with that? I don't know. Tiffnicity. Yeah, you know what it means? What? That she's full of tenacity. She doesn't stop, she doesn't quit. Love that. Yeah. Tiffany, now you need to assign one's will. Willinator. Do you want to know what's funny about that? What? My nickname was Terminator. Really? Yeah. I mean, I gave it to myself, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did. The Willinator. I think I'll just start calling them the Willinator and Tiffnicity from now on. Tiffnicity is an interesting one. <laughs> Do you like it? No. No? no, I don't no. Think oh, okay. Oh, all right. Tiff Do you like Tiffnicity? Do you like the. But you know, it is hard when you put them on the spot. Like, I admire yeah. the fact that they could come up with it just like that because they don't get the questions beforehand. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Do you like the Willinator at least? It's all right. Okay. So he went on <laughs> and asked the Willinator and Tiffness, Tiff, I can't even say the other one, Tiffnicity. And um, one of the worst things about, uh, you know, whenever you do go to cinema, you do hope that people stay off their phones. Yeah. But, um, and we've asked a few uh, people that we've interviewed over the years, you know, if you could, and laws didn't apply or anything, if you could dish out some kind of punishment to people who insist on being on their phone in the cinema, what would you do to them? Um, this was uh, Will and Tiffany's answer. Will went first. Uh, probably curbing, like curb stop. What? Will you mind telling what curb stop, Tiffany what like that means? When you put, you know, you curb someone, you put their mouth on a on a curb of a street, and then they get kicked in the back of the head. You ever heard of that? That's so That's violent. Thing. Don't don't use your phone in the cinema. Tiffany, your turn. Top that. I was just thinking I'd take my belt off and give him a whooping. <laughs> a good old school ass whooping. Like mama used to do. Okay, but that's pretty violent too, taking your belt off. Yeah, but yours could kill somebody and they take oh, fall yeah. out the They're going to wait. They're going to wait. Mine, so they're never going to, they're going to remember, oh, if I pull my phone out, a belt could hit me in my back or on my arms or on my legs or on my butt. Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> Whacking with the belt from Tiffany, which mm. is okay. As she said, she wants to send a message <laughs> and, and just leave them with the reminders, like, don't use your phone. She's making a point. She is. <laughs> Will Arnett, however, wants to end somebody's life. Yeah, he's, he's making a full stop. <laughs> yeah. I have uh, never even heard of that term before that interview. Cur curbing. Um, yeah, as he said, kind of, it was in American History X. And I think there was an episode of The Sopranos which had it as well. Um, and it's not the game Curbs, which is nice, which is like a little ball where you just throw it across. It's and not it's that. it's not related to curb your enthusiasm. <laughs> it's nothing to do with that as well. As we said, the full Although interviews... it will curb your enthusiasm for you. <laughs> it actually will. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so the full interviews for The Lego Movie 2 are up on Joe. You can check them all out there. Big thanks to Richie for doing that. And uh, Serena yes, Dimitri. Thank you, Richie. He is, he is a beautiful boy. <laughs>
As I, I, and, but I ha has to be said, that talent, how lucky was he getting to chat to all of them? I would have run out of the room of Will Annette's though, because I'm a bit Very worried. Much. Well, after he said that, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Lego Movie 2 <laughs> is in cinemas now. Uh, <laughs> Just keep your phones in your pockets. I yeah. think so. Um, we do have a number of other big releases. Uh, one of the most kind of highly anticipated films of the year for a lot of people is Barry Jenkins' new film. He's the director uh, behind Moonlight, which is an absolutely stunning film. If Beale Street Could Talk is his latest one. It's in cinemas now. Let's take a look at it. You ready for this? I've never been more ready for anything in my whole life. You know I love you, no matter what happens. I'm yours and your mind, and that's it. You and me all the time. Honey, there's something I gotta tell you. Drinking to new life. Tish gonna have Fonny's baby. <laughs> I hope it's a boy. <laughs> Come on over here, daughter. You're a good girl, and I'm proud of you. Don't you ever forget it. And who's gonna be responsible for this baby? The father and the mother. When I hold you in my arms, I gotta hold our baby in my arms. We'll find a way. So I'm absolutely dying to see this film. Um, Moonlight just blew me away whenever I saw it originally. Did you like his first one? Loved Moonlight. And can I just say, how have the Academy not included this in Best Picture? It's an out, no, it's a disgrace. Oh. No, it is. After the way they handled the whole Moonlight thing at the Oscars when La La Land didn't win and Moonlight should have won. Uh, I did win. Mm. And then they've gone and, I mean, if Bill Street Could Talk has been the talk of the town for a long time and then they omitted this. I don't I don't understand the way that, that Academy works sometimes. Well, so you obviously liked the film then, this, this new one. Yeah, so basically... Because <laughs> you're pretty angry about it. Yeah, because th this film works on so many different levels. This is a film, a beautiful love story. It is Tish and Fonny's love story, but then at the same time, it is a film that's set in the 70s in Beale Street, and Beale Street represents a street that a lot of... Um, uh, that's common around America, right? And basically, it's the abhorrent racism that exists and that occurs to young black men. This young man is charged for a rape he didn't commit, and it is up to his fiancé, his girlfriend, and the family to try and exonerate him. It's all about being guilty until you proved innocent and not the other way around. But in amongst all of this, it is the most beautiful love story you will see. It is stunningly shot and not in a way, you know when some people um, watch stuff and go, it's st stunning, the cinematography, and a lot of people just go, oh, okay, well that's for film nerds. No, it is just beautiful. You feel like you're a part of this relationship. You get angry. Regina King, thank goodness, has been nominated Fantastic. for Best Supporting Actress. How she wasn't nominated for Best Supporting BAFTA, I will never understand. Um, but she has to walk away with the, the Oscar. And who knows, Barry Jenkins could walk away for Best um, Adapted Screenplay as well. Mm. It's a hard watch, but it is a must watch. And ugly tears, but also felt hope at the end as well, as well as distress, because we're seeing it all play out again. Yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, Roy, you had a chance to see this as well. Do you feel as strongly about it? Sorry, I just took over. No, that's, that's <laughs> absolutely fine. You had most of everything I had to say. I think uh, I think it's brilliant. I think it's beautiful. I, it was like watching uh, almost like a visual poem. It was yeah. very... Uh, it's very artistic to the point where I can understand why... Not understand, but almost understand why the Academy were like, is this too arty? Um, I could see it's it's less accessible than Moonlight was. Um, it's more of an emotional piece. It doesn't necessarily have a strong narrative. Like the the the, the story behind it is very powerful, but it's also um, it's told in a lot of glances. It's told in a lot of like long takes of people just holding hands, um, and it is it is a beautiful love story, and it is a powerful uh, true story as well. I think is it? No, it's based on uh, the time an amalgamation yeah. of different things, yeah. but and the performances are outstanding. But you, you either will go with it and have a fantastic time or you'll think the uh, the way it's presented is maybe you might just turn your brain off thinking it's too artistic for It you. is slow. Like in, in places you're looking at some scenes just going, why are we here? Yeah. And then if you just if you invest in it, then you understand. 
a thing that I like, and I don't usually like this, I always want to leave the cinema on a high and stuff. It's not a spoiler to say it's not, let's wrap everything up in a happy ending yeah, either. It's very realistic. It's telling the story of yeah. like race issues in America yeah. and it's not like America at the moment has tied everything up in a exactly. nice bow. So it is, uh, it is very kind of prescient that way. So if Beale Street could talk, I think it's based on a novel by James Baldwin as well and uh, Barry Jenkins had said he absolutely loved the book and just I think was traveling around Europe at the time and just locked himself away and wrote this film. Um, yeah, as I said, can't wait to see it even more now hearing uh, that the pair of you loved it. So highly recommend it. Go see it. Definitely. Absolutely. Definitely go see it. Um, speaking of visual poems, Rory, Happy Death Day to You <laughs> is also out <laughs> Uh, right now, this minute. I almost sang so, it and I realised that's heavily copyrighted. <laughs> that is copyrighted, yeah. don't sing it. Uh, so let's take a little look at that. Dude, help. I am tripping right now. I feel like I've totally lived through this day already. Deja vu? Yes. The day reset when you died, right? Yeah. I might be able to help with that. I died 11 times. I was stuck reliving the same day over and over again until someone wearing a baby mask murdered me on the night of my birthday. Turns out it was my roommate, Lori. I kicked her crazy ass out a window and killed her, which broke the loop. But now I'm living the better version of my life. You okay? No. Oh, hey, you're up. I folded your pants for you. No way. Dude, did you hit that or what? I don't believe this. It's Monday the 18th again! I know I said I was excited about if Beale Street could talk. I'm genuinely excited about this as well. Are you? Yeah, I think it looks like a lot of fun. Serena, you look terrified though. I was gonna say, what? I don't see anything happy about this film at all. <laughs> it's a it's it's a horror comedy. It's not it's not horror <laughs> That's horror. A very it's not horror horror. horror. <laughs> so I think like you would you would absolutely be able to watch this. It's not scary. It's there's well, a, there's someone, sleep at night. Absolutely. It's a comedy that happens to have someone who was trying to kill people in it. Ah, yeah, that's always it's, the funniest. It's, it's daily life, do you know what I mean? So, uh, so the first one is about this girl who uh, is killed on her birthday and is forced to repeat the day over and over again until she learns some important life lessons. And in the second, at the end of the first one, spoilers, she has kind of sorted her day, and here we are in the sequel, and a series of events leads her to end up repeating that same day over and over again. Um... The first one was a surprise hit. It was very, very low budget because essentially, I think it must be like the same three uh, sets just used over and over, over again and because over, yeah. and it's the same actors in the same costumes. So can't, well can't cost much. <laughs> and it made so much money at the box office. So obviously it's Blumhouse and he was like, oh, that made money. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Everything um, he does makes money. But yeah. is there a need for a second one then? No, <laughs> absolutely not. Uh, whereas the first one was like a violent Groundhog Day. Yeah. This one is like a violent Back to the Future, which does sound great. That sounds amazing. Yeah. I'm um, in. Let's I, wrap it up there. No more from Rory. <laughs> uh, but it, it does feel like they used all their good ideas in the first movie. And uh, the only good idea from the second movie is the title. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. Okay. Yeah. It's It's... It's more of the same, which unfortunately, having watched the first one, doesn't lend itself well. Okay. Because <laughs> you've seen the first one over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, so when you come to the second one, it's like, all right, okay. got it. Sorted. I get <laughs> the it. idea now. Um, what about uh, if it is a horror comedy? Yeah. Comedy? Any laughs? Like decent? There's one or two decent jokes. Okay. But, uh, it's not a long film. It's only about 90 minutes, but it does feel longer than that. That's and a positive. Yeah, yeah, I nice am. and short. And then on the horror side, were you no, jumping? Not at all. No, no. The, the, the one thing I will say is that they put one interesting twist in the middle of the film where it was like, oh, okay, I didn't necessarily see that coming. And it, it has paid off rather well, especially if you have seen the first one. Um, which you should, because the second one probably won't make any sense, but I'll have to say the first one, which is also only 90 minutes, so you can catch up on it pretty quickly. But, uh, yeah, it's fairly forgettable. Okay, so happy death day to you, which is, uh, whenever you're listening or watching to this week's show, we're out around Valentine's Day, so obviously this would be a decent date movie in terms of, like, heading along. Because, look, you can actually, you can move those arms up. And is you can actually, what? what did you call them, Roy? Romance, romance couches. Romance couches. So they come oh. You see? And then we can <laughs> snuggle. 
Oh, there you go. Yeah. You just need I love the way drink. you both move them very slightly <laughs> and then immediately, <laughs> the water immediately put them back down. <laughs> yes, yeah, blame the water. Go on. We know the real the reason. Well, yeah. I, I guess I'm not Richie Drizzen. That's fine. <laughs> so happy death day to you is out in cinemas now. And speaking of visual poems, that's just going to be my segue to every film okay. from now on. Uh, Instant Family is a brand new film starring Mark Wahlberg <laughs> and Rose Byrne. Um, let's take a little look at this one as I well. I hate you so much. <laughs> what? There's so many kids in foster care and they're having an orientation. Ellie, people who take in foster kids are really special. The kind of people who volunteer when it's not even a holiday. We don't even volunteer on a holiday. Over a half million children are currently in foster care. The county puts these on because they can match a lot of kids and parents quickly. Look at the big kids. Everybody's avoiding them. I'm going to go and say hi. But they're teenagers, OK? They use drugs, and they watch people playing video games on YouTube. We're not equipped for any of that. Hi! Just FYI, we can all hear you. Hmm? It's OK. Go mingle with the kitties and uh, don't give it another thought. Bye-bye. She was cool. Lizzie comes with two younger siblings. Three kids? Too much. Oh, oh my God. God. They're adorable. Why would you show us that? That's wrong. You see, I think when Mark Wahlberg shouts like that, he did a lot of it in The Other Guys, yeah. when he's just this confused shouting of like, what, why are you doing? I think that's funny, Mark Wahlberg. Wahlberg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, this is, no, but this is Mark Wahlberg back to, do you know how you watch some films and just go, sorry, why did he ever leave the funky bunch and why is he acting, right? <laughs> why did he put a top on? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but then you see these films and go, yeah, th this worked. And, I mean, this is based on a true story. Um, the director, Sean Anders, is also the writer. He's the guy behind Daddy's Home. So I thought, no, nah, this is going to be bad. But... This basically happened to him in real life where he's adopted three Hispanic kids and become an instant family as well. And that's what this is based on. And sometimes, you know, especially around this time of year where, except for Happy Death Day 2, it's Oscar season, right? So there's a lot of heavy films out which need to be made and that's a great thing about cinema that, you know, there's all these films out there that people should, should be seeing. Mm. Sometimes you just want to switch off and just see an old family style film. And that's what, what this is. I was shocked because I have to say, I saw Sean Andes, I saw Mark Wahlberg, and I just went... And you saw I, I pre Tom too. <laughs> yeah, and I prejudged. And sometimes that's actually a good thing because you go in with really low expectations and you come out going, I laughed. I love Rose Byrne, you see, as well. Yeah. So yeah. I was just like, OK, I'm warming to it because of Rose Byrne. I didn't expect to cry. And there were moments where I was actually crying in it. And it's just a... Yes, is it corny in places? Yes. Does it wrap up all a bit too easily in places and there's judgments and stuff? Yes. But then at the end of the day, it was just a nice film that I quite enjoyed. And as I said, it is based on a true story. And at the end as well, it just has some information about um, in America how you can go to instantfamily.com and consider adopting and, you know... Uh, oh, that's an actual real website as well, or a real program. Com. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. But there's different. Uh, there's like Kids Save, and there's a, a whole heap of different organisations that you can go to in America, um, and you can foster. And the fostering sometimes leads to adoption as well. And it was just, it was just a really nice film, and I haven't seen those in a while. And I just loved that <laughs> I loved Mark Wahlberg again because I do love him all the way back to his Funky Bunch days. Um, and as you said, Rose Byrne is in there as well. And oh. whenever she does, because she does that mixture uh, whenever she is picking her films anyway, but uh, when she is doing comedy, uh, she is very, very funny. Um, like going up against Kristen Wiig in Bridesmaids especially. Oh, yeah. It's just or the hilarious villain in to watch. is fantastic. Oh, of course, yeah, that's right. So uh, a lot of time for um, both of them. So there, another recommendation, basically. Yeah, it's, it's sweet. And, you know, and when she does dramatic as well, she does dramatic well. She's, not because she's Australian, but she's fantastic at what Is she, she Australian? Does. You're joking, yeah? I'm not, I'm not joking. Are you <laughs> Australian? She's that good at that. <laughs> she's that good, <laughs> yeah. I don't know where I thought she was from. She's I, from Sydney. I, I right? just assumed she was English until I found out she was Australian. <laughs> until I, I assumed she was I, one I thing until I... myself. That's yeah, good. Yeah, no, good work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> checked her Wikipedia page as well. Um, so Instant Family is coming out this week. Uh, so yeah, if you're a fan of... Well, you said laughing and crying, so yeah, it is funny as well. And yeah. there's heart in this. So t uh, check it out for something different. Okay. Cool beans. Uh, Instant Family. And speaking of visual poems... Um, our final <laughs> big release this week is The Kid Who Would Be King. Mm. That's it. And we will have the director of the film, uh, Mr. Joe Cornish, on the show next week. Um, but for now, let's take a little look before hearing Rory's review. Leave him alone. It's a tough world out there. And it's getting tougher all the time. 
And the world is not going to change. Hello? Is anybody here? It's you that has to change. Something amazing happened. You have to see what I found. There's something written on the guard. Put it into Google Translate. It means Sword of Arthur. What if it's the sword in the stone? <laughs> Alexander Elliot! It was you who drew the sword! This realm faces mortal danger! There are four days until the solar eclipse when Morgana will enter the world of the living. And I'm supposed to stop her? That's ridiculous. I'm 12. So, Roy, the kid who would be king, what the hell's that all about? It's basically a modern retelling of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. Um, it's, that's, that young chap there is Andy Serkis's son. What? Yeah, the lead. That's Andy Serkis' <coughs> real precious. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, <laughs> that one I liked. That's oh, thanks. What was wrong with the other ones, you <laughs> bricks? Terrible, but that one was good. <laughs> that one, one thing. Um, yes. He discovers a sword and a stone on a building site and takes it out, and then uh, him and his best mate kind of discuss what they should do next, and then a young Merlin arrives and gives advice. So he's told that uh, ancient Arthur's half-sister... Morgana. Morgana. Uh, who's in this played by Rebecca Ferguson, who you know from Mission Impossible Fallout. Yeah. And the Greatest Showman the as greatest well. Showman. Yeah. Uh, wants to take over a divided Britain and it's up to hmm. young Arthur here to help put the country back together again. No metaphors <laughs> to be found. <laughs> no, Not don't mention the B word. Sight. Yeah. Uh, so... <laughs> Obviously, the tale of like Arthur and the Round Table has been told like numerous times. Mm. Um, well, how's the, how's the kid? First of all, I didn't realise it was Andy Serkis. He's really, really good. Yeah. He's really, really good. Really? It, I thought he was. Yeah. Some of them aren't great. Like I thought the bully was the two bullies actually were not great. His best friend really annoyed me. Oh, I found him cute. And Merlin. <laughs> I liked him. Okay, we had two very so different there, hold experiences. Hold on, you literally have the opposite. <laughs> so you liked the main kid. Yeah. Is he playing? A, he's called Arthur. Uh, oh. yeah. No, he's not. He's oh, called he's not. something else. Yeah, it's oh. like Arthur, yeah. Andy, or oh, right, okay. John. Yeah. And he's his dad's name <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in real life. Gollum. But the child's also, name is Gollum. Actually, there's also in this Patrick Stewart who plays the older Merlin, and he's all really excited about it in real life because finally he gets to play a wizard. Mm. So when he has dinners with... Um, Ian McKellen. And Gambon, they can, Michael Gambon, they can turn around <gasps> and he can be a part of... Of course, they're all like yeah. three he, amazing he, he, wizards. He was the only one not in... Not invited to be in Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> of course. How was Patrick Stewart not in Harry Potter? Jeez. Uh, what are you at? Jeez. But, um, do you know what? This, to me, felt like I was watching a primary school production. I didn't enjoy this. Jeepers. You weren't a fan of this, no? I wasn't a huge fan, no. I thought it was fine. There's, there's moments in it where the budget just kind of... Seem a bit stretched. The special effects aren't exactly top notch in places. Okay. But like it has a real nineteen eighties family movie vibe to it where Try and it. I and I keep uh, emphasizing this. Family movies these days are terrified to scare kids. Yeah. Because yeah. it's yeah. like Molly coddling them and they don't want the kids to freak out. Whereas when we were younger, Movies did traumatise the kids, and I think that's important. But that's 100%. why we take them back to the classics, and that's why this isn't Goonies, this isn't Gremlins. The Shining. And you yeah. <laughs> the Godfather Part 2. Yes. Showgirls. Yes. Yeah, all the classics. All the 80s classics. <laughs> okay, so... This isn't going to be a memorable film. You're not going to look back and no, go... No, you know. it, it is aspiring to be, yeah, and I... I appreciate that it was gone for that vibe <laughs> because not a, not an awful lot of films uh, aspire to that, but, uh, yeah, it's... Fine. We see you, we appreciate you, we don't necessarily <laughs> love you though. <laughs> so the kid, the kid who would be king uh, is out in cinema soon and uh, yeah, any kids looking for a date movie? I know Happy Death Day 2 is probably a little bit too obvious. <laughs> do kids go on dates? They probably, I don't know what they do. I don't know. Who knows? Well, you can go and see this one anyway. Um, so those are our big releases this week. As we said, Joe Cornish, the director of the film, is going to be on the show next week. So make sure to tune in for that. Now though, it's time to give away some prizes. Silence. Do we have examples no. of... Do, no, no, because this week, actually, we are Those going to be hosting... <laughs> you can have Roy's half-drunk bottle of water. Um, we're going to be giving away tickets, terrifying tickets, oh. to one of the, well, as you said, Roy, one of the scariest Irish films ever made. Um, the Hole in the Ground. Uh, we're going to be holding uh, an exclusive... Holding. 
Holding. Nice. Yeah. Meant it. No, I didn't. <laughs> uh, screening in Omniplex Cinemas in Rathmines. Uh, so we will be giving tickets away up on Joe. But uh, congratulations to people who got last week's High Clue right. We're going to take a look at it now. And the winners of our free movie tickets to come along are Jerry McBride and Liam Gallagher. Not that, well, maybe, maybe not that Liam sure. Gallagher. Like if The Rock is tweeting, exactly. that's a good thing. I know, of course. We the Rock to, uh... and Liam Gallagher in one week. Um, so last week's high clue was Friendship Feels Alive, mm. Home Improvement with New Man, mm. Moving Finale. Now, Serena, Tim you Allen. have a confused <laughs> Tim Allen. Yeah. Tim Allen. Hold on a second. So d have you seen the high clues? No, but I just looked at... Big fan of the show. Big, huge <laughs> fan of the show. Have you seen the show? I, I saw last week's High Clue and I was <coughs> so I was so stressed because I couldn't figure that one out. But this one feels very easy. Well, this is this is last week's last one. Week's this one. was... Oh, yeah. no, I saw the Batman one, the the one that you were arguing oh, about. That oh, that was yeah, good, fellas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That no, was a that hard was, that one. Was, yeah, that was a toughie. But this one, a little bit easier. So this is Friendship Feels Alive, Home Improvement with New Man, Moving Finale. So, yeah, you're right. It's a... Oh, God, I got it in one. No, no, you got Tim Allen. You have to say what the name of the film any film starring oh, Toy Story Toy Story that's the correct answer oh okay yeah Yay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> can I come back so again next week and play this game absolutely. again absolutely <laughs> so the reason that the answer is Toy Story is the first line friendship feels alive so they have a, a lovely uh, vibrant friendship obviously it's Woody and Buzz to become friends but they feel alive because obviously uh, it's like you're not you're a toy um, but Buzz obviously does feel alive home improvement is a reference to uh, Tim Allen, and he improves the whole home because he comes in and obviously they have loads of adventures together. Uh, with New Man, he is the new man, Buzz Lightyear. And Randy Newman did all the music in the film. This is very deep. And then the final line, moving finale, uh, because the end of the Toy Story films are always a little bit, oh, I'm shedding a tear, and they're moving house at the end of the film as well. So, layers. layers How layers, long does it take you to write layers, this? Four years. <laughs> Four years. They've been anywhere between four years and right before he and does right it. before the show. What time are we doing the show? Um, so that was last week's high clear. As I said, congratulations to Jerry McBride and Liam Gallagher. Uh, their names were picked out of the hat. Do we have a hat? Um, but congrats to everyone else who got well, the uh, the answers here. correct. Oh, Justine usually has the hat, of course. Um, now it's time for this week's high clue. As we said, those tickets are up for grabs. So now. this one. Now. Here we go. Don't, don't shout don't out the answer. The answer. Okay. Tim yeah. Allen. High School Gwen's Big Bash, BFFs are DTF, Fake Friend Has <coughs> Bottle. So we'll do a syllable check. High School Gwen's Big Bash, five syllables. BFFs are DTF, seven. And Fake Friend Has Bottle, five. So it needs to be 575 five because it's a haiku. I don't know that one genuinely. Anything, anything pop in the mind? Any? Oh, okay, Rory, Rory yeah. thinks. Do you want to write, write it down then? We'll look, we'll look at that. Oh. Okay. With the most disgusting pen in the world. Okay. You're just jealous because none of your pens have diamonds. Okay, okay, so. That is not the correct answer. Can I, can I write mine down answer. for you? Are you going to? Oh, That's a bit mean. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, you hide, use this pen? Hide the pen, Nib. Okay, Serena, what have we got? That's, don't let the camera see it. Or the listeners okay, see we're, it. We're, we're back to it not being a film <laughs> title. There's like so many I different know, things. Is that actress in that? No, that actress is oh, not in this okay. film. Well, okay. Then I don't know. So that is this week's high clue. It's high school I took Gwen's. My hand back very violently. There. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that. High school Gwen's big bash. BFFs are DTF, and fake friend has bottle. <laughs> so uh, yes, we'll stick that up on Joe. We'll stick it up on Twitter and the Joe Instagram as well. So keep an eye out for it there. And we also have the competition running up on the website uh, for those tickets. Uh, so you can join us next week at our uh, exclusive screening. And Lee Cronin, the director of the film, is going to be there as well. Oh, yeah. wow. um, that's the Omniplex in Rathmines in Dublin. So look forward to seeing you there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty pretty much it for this week. Serena, have you enjoyed your, your time here? I have. It hasn't been as scary as I thought it would be. Okay. That's good. <laughs> yeah, didn't realise it was going to be it, scary. Yeah, I didn't know there was an emotion people had here. <laughs> coming up, maybe that's why Paul and Justine just come back. We're Will you be here? Week Will week. either of you be here? <laughs> so coming up on next week's show, as we said, we are going to have the director, uh, Joe Cornish, of The King Who Would Be Kid. That is the wrong title. Close enough. The Kid Who Would Be King, which is out in cinemas uh, this week as well. Uh, Serena, thanks a million. Thanks Roy, for thank me. you as well. Thank you to Richie Driss, beautiful boy. And oh, and thank you to Fiona and Shane and everyone else who helps make the show because I always forget to thank you. Love you guys. See you next time. <laughs> that was nice. <laughs> they made me say it. <laughs>